Hi, my name is Gwen Falo, and I am here at Eastern Hills Baptist Church, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, between Fairfax and Madisonville on Islington. And I would like to take you on a tour of paintings I've been able to do in the last 25 years. If you have any questions about the paintings or questions about faith, you could call this number. This is Pastor Ken Revere's number, 513-829-3771. So are you ready to go on a tour with me? Come this way. So the first painting is based on a Masaccio painting of Jesus with 12 disciples, and I chose three and placed them in front of a castle in Toulouse, the south of France. And there's a lot of symbolism in this painting, and if I had time, I would explain it to you all. But we're going to go on to the next. This next painting I was inspired by Nicolas Poussin, his painting of Jesus healing the blind of Jericho. And I added this young man to modernize it, plus I put it in a cemetery in Paris, France, known as Père Lachaise. And why? Because there is a tombstone of Jim Morrison, and this tombstone is visited by hundreds, if not thousands, of young people, and they write on other tombstones arrows to show the way, and they've written, Jim is alive, and Jim is coming back. So, though these two figures are blind physically, this young man is blind spiritually, as long as he believes that it's not Jesus Christ, who is dead, he's alive. It's not Jim Morrison who's coming back, it is Jesus Christ. This next painting was inspired by a painting done by Henri Kaufman, Jesus Christ with the Young Rich Ruler. So I modernized and put a young rich businessman and I replaced the poor of the painter's period with the poor of our period, a woman from Somalia, and she's holding this little child in her lap which actually has a very significant meaning to me that I didn't know until much later. This next painting is based on a painting by a Flemish painter in the 17th century, possibly Rembrandt. And so at the foot of Jesus, there was this angel, and I replaced that angel with this little three-year-old girl from India who is sewing soccer balls. And I replaced the three soldiers falling by the three businessmen falling instead because we will be held accountable one day for everything we've done, good or bad. This painting was inspired by W.S. Burton's painting of Jesus behind bars and I removed the ivy of that painting and I put this masked soldier in front of him. And what happened was that one day that particular painting, along with all the others that I've just shown you, they all came alive. And from that particular painting, my faith came out from behind that mask. And what I understood at that point was that I had deep anger, bitterness, unforgiveness in my heart that I had hidden from myself. And the Lord wanted to use these paintings to open my eyes to trauma that had occurred and how I had not really let go. I had not dealt with those issues and I needed to be healed. So God used these pains to bring about a healing and take away my shame. So I hope they encourage you. This particular painting, there is no Jesus in this one, but there is the white background that permeates through the darkness of men's evil deeds and those deeds will be exposed. And in the meanwhile, these children are being abused. Well, Lord, we do pray for them and ask that you could reach out and heal them. This next painting was based on a painting done by Steinhauser. So I replaced Nicodemus, who was here, with two Cambodian boys and with Jesus. And my prayer was, at the time, and still is, Lord, bring healing to the brokenhearted. This next painting is, well, you have to figure out who is standing to the right of Jesus Christ. It is our modern-day idol, the Oscar, who has no eyes to see, no ears to hear with, 
no mouth to really speak from. And do you see any air coming out of that nose? And what is he holding? A sword. Did you know that about the Oscar? What does he represent? Fame, wealth, honor, prestige? So that's door number one. What about door number two? Well, I chose what looks like to be a loser, but Jesus is in color and he gives me life because of his death on the cross. His perfect life he's given in exchange for my very imperfect life. So are you willing to make that exchange? It can happen at any time. In fact, this next painting is just about that. Jesus wants to have a personal discussion, conversation with you. So this painting was based on Jesus speaking to a woman at the well. And I replaced that woman with a woman of our time. And I would like to say that this intimacy between the two is what Jesus wants to do with you. Will you open up to him and confess your sins just as the woman at the well was able to do? And to receive forgiveness is the best gift ever. So this next painting was inspired by a painting on the Transfiguration. And I modernized it, giving Jesus the white hair as he's described to have in Revelation. And he is obviously resurrected. So this is actually the rapture when Jesus said he would meet us in the air. Are you waiting anxiously for that return? He said he would come as a thief in the night. So that means if we're sleeping, we won't know that he's come to call us home. So I hope you're waiting and ready. And this painting is based on chapter 5 of Revelations of the lamb that was only found to be worthy to open the book or the scroll with the seven seals, having seven eyes and seven horns. The five eyes are on the top of the painting, the seven horns, well, the five below. And as you can see, he's been slain. Are you allowing Jesus Christ's blood to cover you? I hope so. The next series of paintings I did were pastels, and they are all of the same theme of an open door in heaven based on Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, where John said, Behold, I saw a door open in heaven. And that's when he heard Jesus say, Come up here. So, we are waiting and looking for this open door and the appearing of Jesus Christ. And if you're ready, it won't be that he will come to judge you. It will be because he's going to save you from the hour of wrath that is to come upon the whole world. He is not coming as a lamb like he did the first time. He is going to be coming as a lion. Now, these next paintings of butterflies are to remind us that in order to fly, just like a butterfly, we have to die in a cocoon. And Jesus Christ died on the cross, and if we identify with that death, we too die to our sins, and then he gives us life, eternal life, and then we are resurrected with him, and we will live eternally with him. Here's another painting. Again, there's the cocoon representing death, dying to oneself, and then allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us, and that's full of color and life and hope. And here's the third painting. And each of these paintings have more significance and meaning, and I would love to share that with you sometime. Then I did a series of unborn children, and so here's the first of the two a fetus of 10 weeks. This little baby, unborn child, had to be removed because his mother had cancer of the cervix. Yet what a beautiful image of the perfection. The only thing missing between this fetus and a baby is time. And it's being held in a surgical glove. And that just reminded me that God holds all the unborn children in his hands. The second painting is of a 15-week-old unborn child. And what beauty God makes. So who are we to take these lives? In our country alone, 3,000 abortions take place. 
May God have mercy on us and may this stop as soon as possible. Otherwise, wrath is due. And then to end this tour, here's a born baby, Jesus Christ. And he is being held by his mother, Mary, who's embracing the lamb. She too, like all of us, can embrace the sacrificial lamb of Jesus Christ and be forgiven. That is why he died on the cross. And this cross is the cross that was uh, found at ground zero after 9-11. And I painted Mary's foot in pencil as a reminder that she, just like all of us, have walked in this world full of rubble, full of sin, and it means death. That's why it's in pencil. But if we look to the cross, we will find forgiveness and life. That is why I place the cross beam that's horizontal behind Jesus, a foreshadowing of what he knew he was going to do for us. And Mary, just like us, we can be covered with the blood, and that's why there's this blood-like color from his feet and around her. And then once we're covered with that blood, we are covered with Jesus' robe of righteousness. So I am righteous now in his sight because I've received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And he is also my Lord. So I have repented. And now what I want to do is expose evil and allow other people to understand that there's always forgiveness for any wrongdoings we have done. And to encourage Christians that if you have a gift, put it to the Lord's service, whatever gift that might be. And then enable the Holy Spirit to encourage you and empower you to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Because I believe He's coming very soon. And we want to be ready, the bride without spot or blemish, and to receive with us and be able to harvest as many souls as we can into his kingdom before the rapture comes. So I hope this has encouraged you, this tour of paintings, and I pray and ask God to bless you with all my heart. Thanks for coming on this tour.